Long-time mussel farmer Bruce Hearn is now using his interest and expertise in aquaculture to pioneer oyster farming in the Marlborough Sounds. Bruce is always on the lookout for opportunities to diversify and over the past 20 years has been developing a way to farm flat oysters. I started in the early days in 1973. We got the first licence number two, which is the first one of commercial size. Evolved on a part-time basis like most of the people were at that time. So we were copying pretty much what the Spanish did until we decided that that was very labour intensive. And so we started with rafts. And then a guy called Jim Jenkins, who was employed by the Fishing Industry Board, went to, to Japan and saw long lines being used to grow Pacific oysters and came back and said, hey, we could do this here. And so that, that was the first major change in mussel farming in the Marlborough Sounds. I've always been interested in oysters and my wife was a particular fan of oysters. But we've tried other things like powers and seaweed and kinna and rock lobsters, looking for alternatives. But the most viable one looked to be oysters, so we've concentrated our efforts and now we focus almost solely on oysters. They're high value compared to mussels which are low value. We've developed a system for oysters. It's been a long, slow and very expensive process, but um, we have a system. Uh, we now need to refine that system to make it more economic because it is rather labour intensive. These are officially Teostria chilensis, named after the Chilean oyster. They're a flat oyster, they're the champagne of oysters. These are the same as the bluff oysters. They're grown in almost identical water temperatures and they're grown in the sea just like the bluff oyster. Except these are grown on ropes in a marine farm situation where they're in the midwater, top of midwater, where the phytoplankton is at its greatest. So they grow much faster than oysters that are on the bottom. We don't have to dredge, we don't damage the seafloor. They just extract phytoplankton from the water, grow fat, because they're on a rope and individual, they all grow similarly. We'd like them all to grow consistently in size, but we're working on that. Uh, we do get some size variation, but the meat condition is excellent and, and consistent. Because of the meat to shell ratios we get on the farm, we get a very high ratio of brooding oysters. In the wild, about 3%, we can get up to 45%. Because the females are in such good condition, a lot more of them are brooding. That one's probably spawned, had babies and released them, and is now picking up condition again. It's still a very acceptable oyster, but once the spawning's over and they've built up more condition, they'll be a little bit fat on there. That's a better one. Our oysters and the Chilean oysters are the only oysters in the world that brood their larvae full term. And here we have an oyster with approximately 50,000 babies in. This is late stage larvae. They refer to the number as the fecundity. And here we have larvae that's just about ready to settle. They're about four to 500 microns in size, about half a millimetre. They're that mature that they will settle within half a metre of the adult. Whereas all other bivalves, by the time they're ready to settle, they could be in Cook Strait they could be in Wellington, they could be anywhere. This is a system to hold oysters uh, at an early age until they grow to nine millimetres when we can tray them out. The, we've got a big pump here and an inverter um, and it runs 24-7 and it just accelerates the growth. Mostly they grow quite evenly in the flux. It's an important tool for growing oysters because we need single seed and we need it to grow as fast as it can. Once they get to nine millimetres, we're able to put them onto these trays and they slow in the cup well because of the, of the sheer volume that you have there. So they've got to be spread out. We've got 35 trays here to a drop and we spread them out on here so they get growth to the next stage. The next stage is taking them back to the yard to attach them to the ropes. So these will stay in here. They may be graded and retrayed, but 
this is the most efficient way we can figure out at the moment to on-grow them from the time they start slowing down in the upwell, which is from about nine millimetres on. So here there'll be maybe 2,000 oysters in each drop. When these get to 35 millimetres, there'll be too many in the tray. Um, oysters need access to water. Um, and if they're underneath another oyster and they're not kept loose, then they'll stay the same size as they are now. And the ones on top will grow big, but the ones underneath won't. The whole process from settling into the flupsy until they're nine millimetres, into the trays, onto the ropes, back in the water for 12 months, 16 months, is at least two years. We feel that the survival is much better when we separate the oysters. Bat oysters worldwide have problems with disease, so if one gets sick, it doesn't make all the rest sick because we have a huge dilution factor when they're sitting on the ropes. We've just adapted the scallop technology to do something a little different with the oysters. It's a new process for growing oysters worldwide. We've got a system that works. We do have to put a lot of effort into making it more economically viable because the way we do it is quite labour intensive. They'll do 500 an hour, but we can do 1,000 an hour comfortably. OK, well, here we've got some growing on a rope. But obviously, you can see that the uh, density is much less than mussels. In fact, we calculate that on these lines, we need six of these lines to equal the biomass of one line of mussels. So mussels have a byssus, uh, and that they can attach themselves to a piece of rope. Once the cement gland of the oyster is broken, and that's done at a very, very early age, as we take them from our spat to on growing, then they can't reattach. So we have to manually reattach them if we want to put them on a rope. This is the holding system we use for oysters. So we strip them off the ropes through a brushing machine. They go through a grater and we put them into these old mussel floats with uh, lots of holes in them. And uh, we can store them for at least a month like that and they keep in good condition. It means on harvest day, we haven't got the pressure of trying to grade and get them off the ropes. It also gives them an opportunity to settle down after harvesting. And so on harvest day, we just lift these up, give them a quick wash, and then pack them. And uh, you know, we don't get any complaints about uh, shelf life because uh, they, they haven't uh, undergone any stress. We've chosen to market our oysters live on the shelf. We see our future in Asia unless the New Zealand market increases. Um, look at that spat. Aquaculture is about volume, and currently the volume that we get in New Zealand is not enough to sustain our business. Our product's available to anyone that wants it via the internet or via a restaurant, but currently we're only four million people and not enough people want them live in the shell. Um, so export is a logical next step. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.